Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about how in the game of property, in the game of squatters, no good deed goes unpunished because what we're going to discuss is this story out of Atlanta, Georgia, where a homeowner ended up moving to California but wanted somebody to maintain his property that was back in Atlanta. Now, instead of renting it out like he should have, he decided to reach an agreement with a group of individuals who said they were going to clean the property in order to stay there rent free. And that was going to be sufficient for him. Well, guess what? That's not what he did. They're in a squatter situation now. And these people had the audacity after not living up to their end of the agreement, which again, involved no rent to soothe said homeowner. They, they filed a lawsuit against him because he owes them $190,000 because they didn't live up to their end of the agreement. Now, we're going to get into it, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give You give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be in Austin, Texas at MindsFest. Link to tickets, top of the description, promo code AJW for 20% off. An Atlanta property owner is frustrated after he says people have been living on his land without permission for years. He says squatters have been living on a Southeast Atlanta property since the pandemic. So like many of situations in this great nation, it was of course exacerbated during the pandemic. And in this particular scenario, what we're talking about right here is that we had a legitimate agreement agreement between a landlord and a group of individuals. However, during the pandemic, when they instituted an eviction moratorium, these people decided to not live up to their end of the agreement. And again, I just want to point out that based on the local reporting, their initial agreement involved no rent and people were forced to stay home during the course of the pandemic. And their agreement was actually about cleaning up the property, just maintaining it so that this individual wouldn't be fined a whole bunch of money and they couldn't even be bothered to live up to that because post pandemic or during the pandemic, an eviction moratorium meant that people could do whatever they wanted, take advantage of the property owners. And that's exactly what happened right here. You've heard the phrase, no good deed goes unpunished. Well, guess what? That is 100% true, at least in the city of Atlanta. The owner of this nine acre property tells us he plans to build fencing around the front of the property in an effort to keep people out. So first and foremost, I've been told by many a people in the left wing that walls and fences, they, they don't do anything. So the fact that this guy's even considering building walls and fences makes no sense at all because there's no way any physical barrier has ever in the history of ever stopped people from entering a specific property. Except of course that is the case, but as you heard, this is a nine acre property so this guy's got to wrap his whole property around due to the fact that all these criminals let's be clear about that they are in fact criminals keep trying to steal it from him and of course the city of atlanta not only enables this behavior but they punish him for this it's frustrating that, that i'm having to spend so much money i spent ten thousand dollars on cleaning up garbage from vagrants. Now, by the way, it is important to note that while Atlanta is in fact a blue city, Georgia is a red state. They have Brian Kemp as the governor. He is a Republican governor. And just like in Florida, they could pass a law at the statewide level in order to go after these people, but they're not doing so. So yes, this is in part the fault of these red state governors or this specific red state governor not doing his job. I know it's fun to say blue city, blue city, but the fact of the matter is if you're in a red state or you're a red state governor, you have to do something about this to curb the excesses of the Democratic Party in your state. And this is a perfect example of this. And we just saw the bordering state Florida do this very thing. And guess what? It works. And by the way, Atlanta is one of the places that is notorious for squatters in comparison to the rest of the country in terms of documented incidents. Atlanta native David Morris, who now lives in California, owns this nine acre property in Atlanta's Lakewood area. It's the site of his former nonprofit, Lakewood Environmental Arts Foundation. He said about 10 years ago, he started letting four people live on the property rent free if they helped care for the land. But during the COVID pandemic, he closed the nonprofit and noticed even more people staying on his property. The people who are living on the lands started having other people live on the land, their friends. I tried to file eviction and the city of Atlanta said, sorry, we have a moratorium on evictions right now. So yeah, like I told you earlier in this video, this guy was letting people stay on his property for 10 years, which by the way was the site of a nonprofit for free as long as they maintain the land because he moved to California. A great deal it would seem, but of course you're in a situation where people are opportunistic and they take advantage of people like this, so they decided to sublease the property to multiple different 
different individuals because of course they did why just accept somewhere to live in the city of Atlanta for free when you can profit off of it when you can do something illegal and of course the city of Atlanta ends up siding with the criminals in this particular case because that's what blue cities tend to do now I will point out we've covered Atlanta property rights over and over again on this channel they seem to have this phenomenon where people's property gets demolished destroyed due to the wrong address and then Atlanta ends up suing them for the debris on said property well guess what this is kind of a similar situation I tried to file eviction and the city of Atlanta said sorry we have a moratorium on evictions right now he says now years later he has about eight people living on the property and was contacted by code enforcement to clean it up and then just like he said right there they put up an eviction moratorium in order to prevent him from getting these people off his property but they weren't not paying rent due to the pandemic they weren't not paying rent because they just lost their job they were not living up to their end of the agreement by cleaning up the property they were also subleasing the property and destroying it and incurring fines due to the garbage and debris that they were scattering all over said property and this is the state of this guy right now in 2024 due to all these different various circumstances now again i understand why we have somewhat of a delay in the eviction process i know certain states i believe like arkansas allow you to bring the sheriff out and pull people out of your property in something like three days that's how much they've expedited the process and honestly I think that might be a little bit too quick because it seems like you're just bulldozing over the tenant agreement and if they have a situation where they're being scammed by their landlord or forced out with their landlord and they end up having a contract I don't believe that happens to be right but there has to be some middle ground between what we're seeing in these blue cities where it takes over two years in this particular case he said it was the eviction moratorium during the pandemic and we're now in the year 2020 so maybe that three-year period four-year period depending on when he initiated the proceedings is, is a little bit too long for him to be dealing with this I mean that's just me asserting this maybe you think that's okay I just happen to not think it's okay I think maybe 30 to 60 even 90 days should be the absolute maximum in order to settle these particular cases but you know Atlanta thinks differently they think this is a normal thing and they think it's sensible to find this guy repeatedly via code enforcement for the actions of these criminals that are stealing and subleasing his property. Um, the last month, I've gone through five dumpsters. So yeah, like he said right there, he has to clean it up. He's gone through five dumpsters worth of trash because he has to bring in the dumpsters, haul this trash out in order to get rid of it. But again, he's in eviction court right now with these individuals who are continuously trashing the property. And unfortunately, like we've talked about multiple times on this channel, they're actually incentivized to do so. If they keep running up the fines and fees for this property owner right here, that increases is the chances that he will give them a financial settlement so not only do they get to live on this property for free not only do they get to sublet this property but they get to destroy it and they're rewarded for that behavior now a lot of people will say he invited them on under these certain conditions he shouldn't have done that and maybe that is the case maybe he should have just paid people to clean and maintain the property and keep other people out but he was trying to do a quick easy exchange you can live here it's totally fine you go get your regular their job and all that just don't trash the property and they couldn't live up to that and unfortunately they're being rewarded for that and on top of that the entitlement is so insane that they actually countersued him for $190,000. And he says in recent months, at least one person living on the property filed a counterclaim for $190,000. They thought that him letting them live there for free and going through the eviction proceedings for, by the way, a couple of years now, but if you date it back to the pandemic, three to four years was too oppressive to their rights. So they needed to counterclaim against him because they have a divine right to agree to terms for this property and then not follow those terms on top of that sublease the property and on top of that, they have the right to trash the property in order to try to gain a financial settlement because this is the United States of America, baby. And God forbid we ever ever do anything about squatters rights because apparently squatting just like immigrating to this country illegally and committing asylum fraud grants you the god tier rights it unlocks that achievement and you get to do all kinds of crazy stuff like this that was dismissed and and yeah. there was no actual that counterclaim because they didn't show up in court so it will take it will take i'm predicting another 30 days before the marshals will call me to schedule 
a time for me to have five people here to move everything from there to the street. Now he says right there that it will probably take about 30 days for them to schedule a meeting to finally move these people off the property, but I've been rather vague throughout the course of this segment about these entitled people who are trying to seize his property who decided that they were going to sue him for $190,000 because I wanted to save that reveal for possibly the title and the thumbnail which will give it away, but this point in the video. I did get the rid of possession uh, on Friday. About a year ago, Atlanta police visited the area where activists said about two dozen of them were detained. The entire medical staff of Stop Cop City camped on this land, and there's about 30 campers. Mm -hmm. And the police came in and pulled them out of their tents. I'm neutral. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not on either side. Yeah, that's right. This part of Atlanta right here is where they're building what is being labeled as Cop City, which is a police training facility that Antifa goofballs, who, by the way, are committing terrorist attacks against that training facility, have been targeting for a long period of time. So when the police actually came out to investigate the property to interview this individual, they found about 30 of these activists living on the property. So you have Antifa thugs camping out on this property while they're planning attacks on this cop city thing because they just feel entitled to do so unsurprisingly in this particular case the ideology lines up perfectly with the behavior which is you don't have any property rights we're going to steal your property and you know what we're going to use it in order to attack other institutions in the united states of america this one being the atlanta police department so yeah i hope they get thrown out thankfully that lawsuit was dismissed because they were too lazy to actually show up to court although i would have loved Loved for a judge to review that and throw their ass out of court based on how stupid that particular claim is. But this is where we're at in the city of Atlanta. This is where we're at in the United States of America. A domestic terrorist group can squat on your property and it will take years for you to be able to get them off. And even when you get your writ of possession and all your documents in order, you still got to wait 30 days. But guess what? The Atlanta city, they're not waiting any time in order to find you for all the trash that these people spread across the property. Moore says he just wants everyone off his land so he can clean it up to build affordable housing. We're going to build a, just a big fence here and a gate here and put no trespassing signs. I'm not going to build it until all the tenants are out and... Uh, you know, I start getting this place cleaned up. Now, he says that he's going to try to build affordable housing. And honestly, I don't care what he does with it. If that is something that ends up being built, then good for the people who actually legitimately rent said housing. But the fact of the matter is that could be something inserted for PR reasons. And I think that on its own, the idea that he's losing his property to these Antifa thugs is ridiculous and absurd in every possible way. That being said, I want to leave the question out to you guys in the audience. What do you think about this particular case? Should Antifa thugs and criminals have more rights than the average everyday citizen than the legitimate property owner? Or are you a sensible person who realizes how absurd this is? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As usual, if you like this video, then show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social media, support me via support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute absurdity of squatters rights. Till next time.